All right, we are gonna find the Taylor series for our function sine of x, and we're gonna center this Taylor series about pi over two. So let's write out the general Taylor series. Okay, in this case, we are using a equals pi over two, so let's plug that in. And let's see if we can squeeze in the first five terms. Okay, there it is. So to find the actual answer to this problem, what we're going to need to do is find some function values evaluated at pi over 2 and find some derivative values evaluated at pi over 2. Let's do it one step at a time. f of pi over 2 can be found simply by plugging pi over 2 into the x value of the given function. We have to remember that sine of pi over 2 is 1. Next, we need to find f prime of pi over 2, which first requires we take a derivative of the given function. The derivative of sine is cosine. And then we can find f prime of pi over 2 by plugging x equals pi over 2 into that. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So our second coefficient is going to be 0. Next, we need f double prime of x. The derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. And if we need f double prime of pi over 2, that means plugging x equals pi over 2 into that. That gives us a function value of negative 1. Let's continue on with f triple prime. And finally, let's try to squeeze in f quadruple prime. So what we need to complete this Taylor series are these function values over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those function values, I'm going to plug them into each term in our Taylor series. f of pi over 2 is our first term, and that is just 1. f prime of pi over 2 is going to be 0. f double prime of pi over 2 was negative 1, so we'll make this minus. f triple prime of pi over 2 was 0 again. And f quadruple prime of pi over 2 was 1. So one last line to simplify and get rid of our 0 terms. And that gives us the Taylor series for the sine of x centered at x equals pi over 2. Now, if we just want the first five coefficients, then we can pull those out of this problem. They're going to be 1, 0, negative 1 half, 0, and 1 over 24. The last thing that I might do, just because it's really cool, is show you a graph of what this function looks like. Our Taylor series approximation is this blue graph right here. This red graph is the sine of x. And you can see what's happening. This blue graph, or this Taylor series, approximates the sine of x function, and that approximation is better and better the closer our x value gets to pi over 2. So that's what it means for a Taylor series to be centered at a value. The more and more terms we calculate here, the better and better this Taylor series approximates the sine of x function. Well, okay, I hope that that helps you out, and I hope to see you in the next video.